an $11,000 scooter that only has a 155cc motor. Let's talk about that. Good Moto Morning. Welcome to another episode of Kraken's Garage. On Kraken's Garage, we discuss all things on two wheels, motorcycles, and scooters. Do a few gear reviews and a few how-to tutorials on entry-level maintenance. Today's episode, we're going to talk about my Vespa 946 and why it's such an expensive scooter and how rare is it and why it's named the 946. Let's get cracking. If you will humor me for just a bit, I'm going to give you a slight history lesson on Vespa and how they evolved very briefly as I can. In 1944, Piaggio engineers Renzi Spolti and Vittorio Cassini designed a motorcycle with bodywork, fully enclosed the drivetrain, forming a tall splash guard in the front. In addition to the bodywork, the design included handlebar mounted controls, forced air cooling, wheels of small diameter, and a tall central section that had to be straddled. Officially known as the MP5, Moto Piaggio No. 5, the prototype was nicknamed Paparino, either Duckling or Donald Duck in Italian. Piaggio was displeased with the MP5, especially the tall central section. He contacted aeronautical engineer Coindino Desanio to redesign the scooter. Desanio, who had earlier been consulted by Ferdinando and Innocenti about a scooter design and manufacture, made it immediately known that he hated all motorcycles, believing them to be bulky, dirty, and unreliable. Desanio's MP6 prototype had its engine mounted beside the rear wheel. The wheel was driven directly from the transmission, eliminating the drivetrain and oil and dirt associated with it. The prototype had a spar frame and stress-bearing steel outer panels. These changes allowed the MP6 to have a step-through design without a center section like that of the MP5 Paparino. The MP6 design also included a single-sided front suspension, interchangeable front and rear wheels mounted to stub axles and a spare wheel. Wheel. Other features of the MP6 were similar to those on the Paparino, including handlebar mounted controls and enclosed bodywork with a tall front splash guard. I should mention the wheels, single-sided swing arm of the uh, front-end design of the Vespa is a throwback. Bear in mind, Vespa got started post-World War II and all the axes were banned from building weapons of uh, mass destruction. Piaggio was building bombers for the Axis during World War II, a very uh, competent plane called the P-108, tremendous bomber. When they shut down and that factory got bombed, he was robbing the parts bin, and I believe of the landing gear of Eric. Thus, that's why you have that odd front end on the Vespas even to this day. Very much a traditional company. Upon seeing the MP6 for the first time, Enrico Piaggio exclaimed, Sembra una Vespa. It resembles a wasp. Piaggio effectively named his new scooter on the spot. So there's a brief lesson on Vespa. Spin forward to 2013, the debut year of this particular bike. Piaggio was bold enough to release a handmade scooter as a tribute to the release in the very first Vespa Wasp 70 years ago. The 946 styling is sourced from Vespa's original MP6 prototype developed in 1946, hence the 946 name, the Riccardo Italiano, translated, I remember Italian. If you take a look at the uh, beetle bug rear end on this bike, it really does look like a wasp when you look at it from the uh, down from above. Initially, I don't know if these numbers are still true, there were only a hundred of these imported to North America. Very limited quantity. So if you wanted one, you had to step up and get one. Many people are buying them for collectors and putting them in their living room for artwork and things of that nature. I was searching the internet and I found this particular bike at AF1 in Austin, Texas. If you have never been to this dealership, they are an amazing Italian brand. They carry all the major brands from Italy. So be sure to check them out. They had one for a very handsome price. I didn't even hesitate. I called them up, left a deposit on my credit card. Within a week, I was on a one-way flight out to Austin. The salesperson was kind enough to pick me up at the airport, take me to the dealership. I signed on the dotted line, handed over my money, and started my trek home. 
I traveled 1,800 miles on this 155cc scooter from Austin, Texas to the Old Dominion here in Virginia. And for the most part, uh, about 75% of that trip was in torrential downpours. Maybe I'll tell that story another day, but that was a mess. So that's how I, I acquired this bike. Let me briefly go over the specs here. It's a single cylinder four stroke with catalytic converter and electronic fuel injection. Single overhead camshaft, three valve, two intake and one exhaust. Cylinder capacity is 155 cc's. Max speed according to Vespa is 57 miles per hour or 93 kilometers per hour. I can attest to you that is understated. Uh, maybe that is for the 125 cc version of this that the rest of the world gets. But this particular bike, I have had it verified by GPS up to 72 miles per hour. It will cruise at 65 miles per hour all day long. Just not uphill. Tank capacity is 2.2 gallons or 8.5 liters. Stated miles per gallon are up to 117 miles per gallon, up to 50 kilometers per liter. That is generously overstated in my opinion. And I'm constantly getting somewhere between 70 and 75 miles per gallon. So I have about 150 mile range on a tank of gas on 2.2 gallons. The ignition is electric, automatic transmission is a twist and go CVT, front suspension, single link arm with coil spring and dual action hydraulic shock absorber, rear suspension, coil spring, and adjustable preload monoshock with progressive lever system. Front disc brake is 220 millimeters ABS and ASR. Rear brake is also 220 millimeters ABS and AB ASR. Seat height is 31.6 inches or 805 millimeters. Emissions approved EPA and CARB. Warranty for this bike is two years unlimited mileage. When they first came out, uh, Vespa or Piaggio offered a, a uh, roadside assistance for one free year provided by Road America and Road Canada. They discontinued that January 1st, 2017. I'd like to point out is the shock absorber, I'm not gonna disassemble the panels to show you, is at an angle here. That design is brilliant because it allows you to float the seat seamlessly without showing shock without stuffing shock absorbers horizontally up inside these wells. So it does a tremendous job and a great styling cue on it. The seat did have a passenger seat which attaches on the back and extends it out about that far. I took it off, I constantly ride just solo and it allows me a little more room for my luggage when I travel long distance on this scooter. Why is it so expensive? That's a really good question. Think about it, that's handmade with 330 welds on this scooter. Think about your, your Honda, your Yamaha, or your Triumph, or Harley Davidson. If they handmade my Harley Davidson Icon Revival, can you even fathom what that bike would cost? I bet it would be fifty to $60,000 if they just hands-on built it from the ground up. I should also mention that the uh, seats are Italian leather as well as the grips, and those are all hand-stitched from the factory. So I think it's safe to say this would be a luxury scooter, and that's kind of an oxymoronic statement, kind of like jumbo shrimp. Why is it so expensive? It's handmade. A first for Vespa ASR electronic traction control, two ABS channeled ABS, both front and rear wheels, LED lighting all the way around, except the US version got uh, blinkers on the front and rear. I have since ordered the parts from Europe and kitted this one out the way it should have come from the factory. The body is handmade out of metal. I should also mention that post-World War II, when Piaggio was making bombers and all the factories globally were converting to uh, making uh, weapons of mass destruction and, and motor armament and things of that nature, steel was of a commodity. You could not get your hands on it. So when, when uh, Piaggio started making the Vespa, a lot of the body panels and items on the bike were made out of aluminum, which was the only metal available at that time. A lot of the parts on this bike are made out of aluminum and it is quite expensive by today's standards versus back in 1946, post-World War II. So kind of a fascinating fact there. The negatives of this particular bike, and this is my opinion, not anyone else's, there's zero storage. All the other Vespas, you open up the seat and you can put in 10 bags of grocery underneath the seat. It's a brilliant design. This one has none. It's all about style, it has nothing to do with functionality. The price, $10,499. By the time you add freight, prep of the bike, you're up 
over $11,000 for a 155cc scooter. And we'll talk about my justification for that in just a minute. It's only 155cc motor. Why Vespa didn't put in their 278cc one out of their GTS lineup? That would be a lot more weight and you would also have water cooling and all the plumbing that goes along with it that increases the weight. So they were looking for simplistic design, which I believe is a throwback to the original 1946 MP6 Vespa Wasp that, that was made at that time. So why was it named 946? The 946 is Vespa's flagship scooter. That's right. The puniest, one of the puniest motor scooters they make is their flagship. Rather than build upon their current designs, Vespa looked way back to the 1946, hence the name 946, to their original Wasp concept and worked from there to create the 946. Rather than develop a mainstream model, Vespa crafted a flagship design to inspire future models and generations in the same way the original Vespa did. The result is the 946, a fresh interpretation of what it means to be a Vespa in the 21st century. The 946 was first shown in 2011 at the uh, ISEMA show and badged as the Quarantasi. I have to look that up. I don't know what that means. Aside from the styling, the biggest news with the 946 design is the incorporation of aluminum. Vespa has constructed the side panels, fenders, seat, handlebar covers from this light but expensive material. Traditionally, Vespas have used steel Monaco body, which also serves as the frame. This concept has always been heavier than competing scooters with steel frames but plastic panels. So Vespa's use of aluminum closes the gap here. I should also mention that this particular model was brand new from the ground up. They didn't just work from an existing frame from any of their other bikes. Leg room on it is roughly three to four more inches, which I am thrilled to death to have being a tall rider at six foot four. I have oodles of leg room on this scooter. As far as weight, it's still kind of a heavy scooter considering the small engine displacement of 155 cc's. The 946 is physically small design and is initially available with 125 cc or 155 cc motor depending on where you live. Same motor, basically a 52 millimeter or 58 millimeter bore. Most of the world is being offered the 125 cc variant which broadly meets learner regulations but North Americans are receiving the 155 cc version which meets interstate requirements across the USA. This bike has about 12.7 horsepower on tap while the rest of the world that gets the 125 gets about 10% less or 11.6 horsepower. So this is a very Italian statement. With the 946 Vespa can legitimately boast having no competitors. Whether that's a good thing or not depends on how you look at it. The model enters uncharted waters by creating a new ultra premium scooter class. Normally a mid-size Vespa retails for around five grand. So the 946 doubles that with its 94.99 US price tag. As other Vespers were already the priciest scooters on the market, people consider the 946 probably aren't comparison shopping to other makes. The 946 isn't replacing a second car like many scooters, it's getting parked between the Alfa Romeo and Maserati. So what are Kraken's thoughts on this particular bike? Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask because I'm an ambassador for Vespa as well as the 946. I have owned this scooter four or five years. It has always performed marvelously for a handmade machine. It has worked flawlessly during that time. I only have six or 7,000 miles on it. It's not a whole lot, but I do ride it quite a bit. And when I do, I take long journeys on it. I enjoy it. It's not uncommon to see me riding up and down the East Coast on this bike right here. Now regarding the price, is it a lot of money? Hell yes it is. It's a heck of a lot of money. You have to really want something like this. In my case, I have ridden over 1 million miles and I don't say that boastfully, so don't read too much into that. Uh, that and 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee. During that journey, I have ridden so many times across the United States and uh, you know all over North America. When I meet somebody who's like, hey, I rode to California and back on, on my uh, Road King or, or my Gold Wing. Good for you, I hope so. You're only riding the top of the line and have you know 20 times the power you need and sitting on your sofa while you're doing it, which is what they're designed for. There's nothing wrong with that. After you've done this a few times, you start to seek new horizons to, to still enjoy the two-wheel sport. In my case, it's Vespa's. When I step back down to a 155cc scooter and I take a journey two-thirds of the way across the United States, I feel like I really accomplished something. 
I really do. This bike isn't for everyone. As I said, when I meet other riders uh, that are interested in, in this particular bike, I throw them the keys, go take a spin, you know? By the way, the key has one of those uh, switchblade keys. So my feelings are, I'm not getting any younger. I'm all about riding in style. Uh, it's part of the reason why I bought the Icon Revival. I just think it's an amazing bike and I'm not gonna see 100,000 of them like Harley does for every other model they make. So I enjoyed driving the off the beaten path bikes. This certainly fits that niche. I love it to pieces. I will go so far as to say that this bike exceeds the quality of all other bikes I've owned in my lifetime regarding fit and finish. Yes, a scooter, 155cc scooter, has better tolerances, better paint, and better fit and finish than my Harley Davidson Icon. That's quite a statement. If this got totaled tomorrow or stolen, I would buy another one the next day. I would chase it down anywhere in North America and go get it and ride it home. I would. I love the bike that much. When I leave this world, this will be the last bike that leaves my stable. I will have this bike until I take my last breath. It means that much to me. It is the most beautiful, finely crafted piece of uh, machinery I have ever owned in my lifetime on two wheels. Do I advise anyone to go out and spend this kind of money on this smaller scooter? No. Just remember, pimping ain't easy. Keep the heads ringing. I have posted on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and I have cracking pages there so if you want to check them out. They're listed down below. And I said, you know, post a picture of my stage setup for the 946 and I'm shooting a video on it. And I put the caption on there, I'm going to lose 20 subs. And I will. A lot of my... Uh, Viewers are hardcore Harley enthusiasts, and uh, when they see me post my scooter or my Benelli information, uh, informational videos, inherently they uh, run away from my channel. That's okay, nothing wrong with that. Don't want you here. I mean, that I, I make no bones about telling you my channel is about all things on two wheels, and I mean it. There is no bike bigots living in my helm. So with that said, to all my haters that are gonna quit and leave over this video, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord splits you. <laughs> so if you can get out of your comfort zone and realize I'm a macho man, I gotta ride a big old bike, go down to your local Vespa dealer and take a ride on a GTS 300. You will be blown away when you come back after that ride. It is an amazing piece of kit. Be sure to check them out. Believe me, many of uh, guys I've met have sold their bigger bikes and just gone to riding scooters. They're absolutely amazing. And with that said, there's my ghost dog, Bourbon. He's here to tell me to wrap things up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you wanna see more in the future, hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner. And remember folks, go riding. It's good for you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.